My full name is Iftikhar Ahmed Ayaz. Um, job titles various. I am the honorary consul for uh, the Pacific Tuvalu Islands in the United Kingdom. I am also the ambassador of Tuvalu designate to the Commonwealth. In addition to that, I'm holding several voluntary positions. So it's a very busy life. You see, basically the whole object of these diplomatic positions is to sustain and maintain and promote good bilateral relationships, you see. And bilateral relationships involve not only courteous relationships, they um, involve active participation into helping each other in the development of the various services which are essential to improve the quality of life in the country. And when, when I became the um, honorary consul Duval was not a member of the Commonwealth, but then I worked towards it and eventually at the beginning of uh, this century in year 2000-2001 Duvalu became a full member of the Commonwealth, you know, and through the Commonwealth we established friendship and relationships with those 54 member countries, which is extremely helpful. So what I'm saying is, this job is, is uh, uh, very, very sensitive. And I come up with challenges almost uh, all the time, <laughs> all the time. I was born in pre-partition India which is uh, northern India, that is western Punjab. For a couple of years, I was brought up in Rawalpindi, which is now in Pakistan. And then uh, soon after that, uh, we moved to Kadian. And I lived in Kadian for about 10 years before I moved out to East Africa. And then, of course, uh, when I completed my uh, secondary education in Tanka. I came over to Pakistan and I joined the TI College, which is Talimul Islam College, which was then in Lahore. But I was in the college for about a year when I received a scholarship for teacher training in, uh, in Kenya, Nairobi. So then I had a gap year before I could uh, join the college in Nairobi for teacher training. During that gap year, I started teaching in a private primary school. I had hardly completed two years of teaching when I was promoted to become assistant inspector of schools. And uh, I was in that position for a couple of years and then I was appointed as the district education officer for the Dar es Salaam district, which was the main district of uh, Tanzania. I worked in that position for um, uh, a couple of years and I was promoted to become the regional inspector of schools in the western region of Tanzania. Then uh, something political happened. You see, this was uh, 1965. And at that time, uh, there was great political upheaval in Africa because UK was supplying arms to the apartheid government in South Africa. And uh, because Africa did not want UK to supply any arms to the South African government. They boycotted UK 
and they cut off diplomatic relations with UK. Now, as a result of that, UK withdrew their technical assistance to these countries, including Tanzania. So all the technical people in education, health, um, engineering, whatever, you know, they were all withdrawn by UK. So there was a big uh, uh, gap in the civil service in uh, Tanzania. After independence of Tanzania in 1961, there was uh, a great violence in the country because the Africans wanted a, a rapid rise to higher positions where they could enjoy those facilities and amenities which the expatriates were enjoying when they were there. And they wanted all this to happen overnight, but that could not happen. So they were into violence and they were killing, you know, Asians and Europeans and looting and this and that. So that the situation had become uh, pretty nasty, you know, from that point of view. So a lot of uh, my colleagues, that is uh, Asian um, expatriates who were Ahmadis, they decided to migrate to countries like UK, Canada, etc. Uh, but I then thought that before I make a decision on that, I will consult our uh, Khalifa. It was then the third Khalifa. And uh, I wrote to him. I said, well, you know about the situation, but it is terrible. I mean, our life and uh, uh, honor and everything is at risk. So, uh, Practically everybody's gone. I'm here now and I want your advice whether I should go to UK or Canada. So please uh, guide me. And he wrote back. He said, I don't want you to go <laughs> anywhere. I want you to uh, renounce your British citizenship and take out Tanzanian citizenship. So without any questions, I followed his advice. I believe that in following uh, the Khalifa's advice, there is always a blessing. So anyway, I renounced uh, my uh, British citizenship, which I then had, and then uh, um, I applied for Tanzanian citizenship, which I got fairly quickly. In due course, uh, the government of Tanzania, they got me a Commonwealth Fellowship for higher education in the UK. And I came over to UK in 1973 and I joined the university in Newcastle upon Tyne from where I got a general BA. On the basis of that achievement, I was offered a scholarship, a British Council scholarship to come to London and do a postgraduate diploma in teaching of English as a foreign language in the master's uh, program of the university. But then I had no scholarship and I could not afford to live in UK, you know, and continue with that. So I decided to go back to Tanzania. But when I was preparing and my Tanzania High Commission in London was trying to organize my return journey. They just told me, they said, oh, if you want to stay on for one year more, we have uh, an assignment for you. And that is the Commonwealth Institute in uh, uh, Kensington. They need a fellow for Africa. And that enabled me to pay my fees for the master's degree. And then uh, I returned uh, to Tanzania and um, I was head of uh, an English department in a college of education. And then I was posted as a senior lecturer in applied linguistics in the University of Dar es Salaam. So that's uh, where my career started building up. When I was uh, 
at the University of Dar es Salaam, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, which has its headquarters in Rome, they decided to set up a center for integrated rural development of Africa. And uh, I started working there on a three-year contract from 81 to 84. And during that uh, uh, period, I had established contacts with the officials at the headquarters of FAO in Rome. And because of my um, uh, good services and my competence and efficiency, they said when I complete my three years uh, in Tanzania, they would uh, uh, offer me a contract in Rome, which I accepted. And in 1984, I came over to London and uh, settled my life, uh, my wife and my children here in London for their education, etc. And I was preparing to go to Rome. I received a message from the Commonwealth Secretariat that there is a job for me in Tuvalu. And it sounded something very strange to me because I had never heard the word Tuvalu. <laughs> but anyway, out of curiosity, uh, I told them, I said, okay, uh, give me a couple of days and I will uh, respond, you know. So during those couple of days, uh, you know, I asked my son, I said, go to the library and get an atlas. Let us see where the location of this country is. And obviously we were all shocked that it was a tiny little dot, you know, <laughs> away from anywhere in the world. So anyway, I was very disappointed. But uh, as our practice is, I mentioned all this, you know, to our fourth Khalifa who was then in London. So I told him, you know, I said, I'm going to Rome. I have set up this job, but now I have this uh, uh, funny message from the Commonwealth Secretary and they want me to go to somewhere which is out of this world. <laughs> you know, when, I, when he heard the word Tuvalu, he just, uh, uh, I saw his response. He became very alert. He said, Tuvalu? He said, oh, I had uh, a letter from someone telling me that Tuvalu is a 100% Christian country. And if I really want to start off preaching in the Pacific, then I should send a missionary to Tuvalu to start off, you know, the campaign, the preaching project. So he said, this call is not from anywhere else, but from Allah, God Almighty. So you are not going to Rome, you are going to Tuvalu. <laughs> when I went uh, as a new expatriate, uh, I was the uh, field expert for the Commonwealth assigned to Tuvalu to provide them uh, with a new education policy and a new curriculum. That was my assignment, my responsibility. Uh, the island itself is very remote, very isolated. It is right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, one other uh, interesting thing is that it is a coral island. It's not a volcanic island. So they have no uh, fertile soil. They cannot grow anything, no vegetables, even no grass. So all this food, you know, meat and chicken and eggs, whatever, they all have to come from uh, Fiji, overseas, you know, otherwise there's nothing. You know, at the end of my term, uh, when I was ready to come back, I was packing and busy when I heard a knock at the door. So I went out, not expecting anyone. And what I see, the prime minister, He's at the door and uh, of course uh, we were friendly. I used to talk to him informally and he came in 
and he started talking, you know, about my work and about my departure from Tuvalu, etc., etc. And at the end, he said, for a long, long time, they were uh, keen to find someone who could represent Tuvalu in the United Kingdom. And they said they had not found anyone suitable. But now they want me to go back to UK and become their representative. This was back in 1996. So I said, well, I have served your country for some years and I'm quite happy, you know, but this was uh, a voluntary work position. This was as uh, honorary consul, which means that I would be receiving no money from the Tuvalu government. And I accepted to work on those terms. And uh, so that is how I became the Tuvalu Honorary Council. And then later on, uh, because of the achievements and the work I had done uh, for Tuvalu, Tuvalu decided to designate me as an ambassador to the Commonwealth. And then also uh, because I was very closely associated with the activities of the UN Human Rights Council, they decided to appoint me uh, designate me as an ambassador to the UN Human Rights Council. So this is how it started. And fortunately, I mean, I would say this is just the blessings of God Almighty that I'm still continuing in those positions. And um, I mean, if you just count from 96, it is about 26, 27 years.